what's the best way to build muscle? That is an awesome question and it's super common, so let me dig right into it. Remember that when it comes to building muscle, muscle is based, and the production of muscle is based on your body. And we now know that there's three main different types of bodies or metabolism types that we refer to as the ectomorph, as the endomorph, and as the mesomorph. So those three have different ways of building muscle because they respond very differently to training and to eating and the process of recovery. They all have similarities, of course. We're all human, right? We got two arms, two legs. But somebody who is an ectomorph, for example, is gonna have a very different response to their training and eating if they're eating the exact same thing as what a mesomorph might have or an endomorph might be eating, right? Take the same meals, take the same process, put it in those three different kinds of people, they all produce different kinds of results. However, we have noticed from our own personal experiences, and again, I'm speaking only from personal experience. This is not a scientific research study or a case study or a report. This is based on my 10 years of personally training dozens of men and women from age 50 to age 65 down to age 20 and everything else in between. There's a few things that I've noticed that work very well, especially if you watching this right now are somebody who's relatively new to training, or if you're somebody who's been training for quite some time, but now you're kind of like, hey, I'm ready for another level. I'm, I'm kind of plateaued, I'm kind of stuck. It's the battle of the century, fight! This will help you get out of what I believe to be the plateau stuck that a lot of people go through during their training journey. Here it is. When it comes to building muscle, there's only two main things that help create the muscle based on all the dozens of things that we're gonna read and see on the internet, okay? They all sum up to two things. Number one, you need those muscles to get stimulated, to get stimulated. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean is, for example, let's say you're on the bench press, and let's say you're bench pressing really heavy weight, whatever that weight is for you. Let's say it's 60 pounds a side, so 120 in total. Well, if you've been bench pressing 120 pounds for six months to eight months, you're doing it with the exact same reps, you're doing it the exact same way, well, guess what? Your muscles will not respond as effectively as it did way back in month number two and three. If you're a month on, on month number six, seven, eight, and beyond, you're gonna be stuck, most likely. Why? Why, why is that? Because your body has this thing where, to make it sound very simple, it adjusts to whatever pressures you give it. It adjusts to whatever pressures you give it. So let's, let's take a very opposite contrast here. Have you ever drank alcohol? I'm sure you probably have if you're watching this video. And if you haven't, don't start, and don't start because of me, okay? If you have before, then remember this time. Do you remember the first time that you had that sip of beer, that hard shot at the restaurant, at your friend's party? Do you remember how you felt after that first taste of alcohol? Well, for most people, they'll usually say something like, Oh my God, the first time I ever tasted it, Alan, I, I, I felt like throwing up, I felt kind of woozy, but after a few minutes, I felt really good, and then the list goes on. Notice after three, four, five months of drinking alcohol, if you have that one sip, what does it do to you? Well, for most people, it does absolutely nothing. They have to take more sips, more alcohol, and some more money to get the same results or a similar result to what they got in the first time that they had that taste of booze. Well, why? Well, it's because the body has an ability to adjust. Well, guess what? Let's take that alcohol example out. Let's go back to the training and building muscle. Building muscle in your body has the same or similar effect. Do the same thing all the time and your growth stops. So an easy method that I've learned to use is something that's not new. It's been around for decades, and that's simply called the drop set method. So what does the drop set method mean? The drop set method means whatever workout you're going to do, you're going to hit that heavy or that regular set that you normally do. 
Again, in this case, bench press at 60 pounds a side, and let's say you're doing 10 reps. Well, a drop set method is taking that weight, and as soon as you're done the set, you pick up another pair of weights that is 20 to 30% less. So in this case, let's say you are holding 60 a side, you now drop it down to 45 a side. You pick it up immediately, and then you bench it again. And you might only get two, three, four, five reps. And as soon as you're done that, you put down those weights, you grab another one that's 20 to 30% lighter. Let's say it's 30 pounds at this point. And you do it again. And when you're done, when you can't push it, you drop it, you grab another. Let's say it's 20 pounds each side. You do it again. As soon as that's done, you drop it. 15 pounds, drop it. 10 pounds, drop it. All the way until you are down to pebbles, two pounders, whatever you can find in your home gym or at the gym. Now, I went on about that, but there's, there's real evidence to this. Because you might be saying, that sounds like a lot. Well, it is. And here's why you want to do it. You want to do that because the muscles will always respond to overload. Everybody put your hands in the air. It'll always respond to overload, meaning that if your muscles are used to a certain capacity of resistance, if you start pushing it to do more than what it regularly is accustomed to doing, over time, it'll grow. It'll change, it'll get leaner, it'll get stronger, it'll, it'll develop new muscle fibers on top of the old ones because you are demanding from your body to do more and get more than what you've ever had before. Now that goes for anything, whether you're talking about building your chest, building your arms, building your lean six pack ripped abs, building your butt, getting rid of the fat in the back of your legs and building lean muscle. No matter what the body part, you want to create that overload experience because when you do, it stimulates the body to change. And unless you create that stimulation, you can push weights all day. If your body is familiar with it, you'll get some change but some change would be the difference between getting a little to getting a lot. As the old saying goes, you're already in pain. You're in the gym, you're pushing it, you're at home working out. Make sure you get a reward from it. And one of the best, easiest ways I know how in this simplified video is add your drop set routine. That's number one. Number two, to build lean muscle faster. As soon as you're done your workout, make sure you have a protein shake handy to take down immediately after the session. Before all the internet crazies out, jump out on this video and they say, the, the science and well, I don't know about this. And, 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 and all the crazy stuff that happens. Uh, let, let, me, let me be fair, okay? What I'm sharing with you is from my own personal experience. It's worked well for me and for my circle of people. So I'm not here to say that it is science because there's so much science, science, science that says you do or you don't. What I'm talking about is personal experience. And I have personal experience of training very hard, six days a week, not having my protein on time, not even having enough protein. And after two, three months, I looked at my body and you know what I saw? Round. Huh? I'm being a little sarcastic here, but no joke, like round, like my, my stomach was round and my chest was round and my face was overly round and everything on me was round and I had no definition and I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Game over. Looking back on my notes, I realized, oh, I'm training regularly, I'm having enough water, but I'm not having enough protein. The moment I made sure that I had my protein immediately after the workout, which is important, by the way, because after you stress your body, it's exhausted, it's tired. Like, how do you feel when you haven't eaten all day and you finally get that meal when you get home because you're so heavily into your work that you forgot to eat and when you get home, you eat? What do you do? You shovel that thing down because your body's starving for it. Well, guess what? When you're taxing your body with drop sets and working out, your muscles are waiting to be fed. They're waiting to be fed. And that's why it's so important to have that shake ready or that meal or however you wanna consume your protein. But in conclusion, don't wait to feed your muscles after you beat the heck out of it for that 45 minutes, one hour, two hour session. Have it ready because your body will help absorb more of it because it's, it's, it's desiring it, it needs it. 
and then you give yourself a 30-day period and watch when you do this consistently drop sets plus immediately taking your protein after 30 days you may not see a dramatic difference but i can assure you you take that before picture you take that after picture and you give it that 30-day window you make sure you're consistent huh, you may be very impressed with the results that you produce for yourself as a foundation to build your body to something that you've always wanted and dreamed of having, but maybe didn't get an opportunity to build it until starting today. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, click that like button and leave us a comment. Not to mention, if there's any questions that you've got, go ahead and DM me and shoot me that question. I'll be happy to create another video here that answers your question as soon as I can. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next video.